Good afternoon and welcome back to another ironic introduction to another video. Today I'm just chiming in with my thoughts on the Dev Diary, the fall check-in. I'm pretty much going to go through the bullet points that Kabam that Jim lays out here, give my two cents on that. As always, there's a link to the forum in the description below if you'd like to read for yourself. But that said, let's dive right in. So, touches on some brief intro stuff here we can skip through, but covers over the future of quests. Now, back issues number five was absolutely amazing. He mentions here that tens of thousands of us have already bested all of it, so that's really, really cool. Uh, and then dips into Act 6, talks about the specifically the champion boss uh, changes, the attack reductions, and the fight reworks. Now, I think these first two, absolutely amazing. I really don't have any more requests in that regard. Uh, but as far as fight reworks, uh, they seem to be done with this, uh, especially with the released part here, and there's no more like pending. Uh, and I do still think there are quite a few fights that need to be reworked, that are ha definitely need to be looked into. Uh, so I super hope at some point in the future we hear like a, hey, we are going to rework them, but it might just be something that never gets changed. Uh, people are just going to have to power through. Maybe they do want, you know, 5% of Act 6 to just be gated behind these ridiculously roster-restrictive fights. Or maybe they have plans to continue releasing champions that will handle those fights. Both of those are things that can happen. Not my ideal, especially since they were doing this whole big rework anyways, but you know, at this point I feel like we're beating a dead horse. I do think it is something that the players can push past. Um, not ideally, but is something that can happen. So, uh, but that's just my thoughts there. Overall, I'd say, you know, uh, out of 100, 94% satisfied, I would say, uh, for myself. So good enough that I'm willing to at least look past it. Book 2, Chapter 1 is coming. Uh, in dark blue here, you can't really read. It is a December 9th launch. So we do have Book 2 in 2020. They did manage to meet that. And that's actually really important because not everything they said they were going to launch within a time frame got launched within that time frame. That's just kind of, uh, you know, part of a time frame, right? It's what they wanted, not necessarily what was actually feasible. So uh, we do have confirmed book two launch December. So that's really, really awesome. Can't wait to see the rewards for that and really dive into that content. Although myself, I'll probably push book two off until probably March. I'm going to be honest, March or later, uh, but hopefully I can get to it sooner than that. Cavalier difficulties released, and they do mention that they want to iterate, improve the content, and rewards for your effort. Now, there's no like caps or anything, but just seeing the word and rewards for your efforts does give me hope that we will see improvements to Cavalier difficulty. Now, it might be a little bit, it might come in the form of a large update in a couple of months once Cav difficulty has been around for a bit, kind of the same way they very incrementally updated the uncollected rewards, but just the fact that that's coming, I do really like. I do think this Cavalier monthly event looks a bit better. I don't know. I haven't dived in myself yet. Uh, but I do think the changes to the nodes themselves actually were really, really good. So I do have optimistic uh, thoughts there. They did the Act 2 reward update. That's cool for new players. Uh, Summer Smackdown was released. 85,801 players managed to take that down. That's pretty good. I wish I had more perspective on how many total players are playing the game, but that's still a really solid number, so uh, I do think that was super cool. And then they do mention Summer of Pain. Uh, they mention maybe Spring of Suffering. And there's a, an ellipsis here and a maybe, so, you know, I'm not even gonna count my hopes on that. I'm expecting, if anything, maybe we'll get a Summer of Pain in 2021, but it does show that that is in the works. They do want that to happen, so uh, I do look forward to that. I think that'll be fun. It'll give, you know, everybody who who have their eyes on that, keep an eye out, start getting ready, because it is coming, we just don't necessarily know when. Back issues number six is coming, and coming soon, makes me think maybe January, maybe February. Uh, they didn't give us an official date, so I don't think it's going to happen in December, but I do have high hopes for January or February. Um, or maybe a later announcement for December, but I'd say if anything early as January, that would be my prediction. I do really look forward to that back issues number six. I haven't even seen any teasers for it, so uh, I honestly have no idea. 
And then amping up alliances, all these changes, the battle group assignments actually I think are really, really cool. The top alliance champions is kind of neat, but I don't use it that much. Um, path assignments I'm looking forward to because I'm hoping that really, really helps players like figure out which way they're going towards. But they've said they're putting it on hold as they look towards a larger revamp for alliance wars and alliance quests. So I hope that means we kind of ditch this antiquated system, which has a lot of just inherent flaws. We get something a lot more streamlined, a lot simpler, and more focused on the fights themselves rather than overly complicated maps that make it really difficult to like plan out or tell people how to go or pathing. It just doesn't make any sense. So I do hopefully look forward to a revamp, although no timeline there. Defender placements also put on hold. AQ officers starting development. So they have a feature focused on giving alliance officers more control and organizing AQ, which is really good. We need a lot more features in the game for that. Uh, it's past the design phase and is currently in development. So I'm expecting another three to four months there. So don't have much input there until I see what it is, but I do expect to see that in the next six months. Uh, at least from a player perspective. Season 19 Refresh was released. It was garbage. Alliance War in the future, they know that they need to reevaluate Alliance War in general. Uh, so again, I will continue to hold bated breath here, but I don't have high expectations. I'm just going to be completely honest. Alliance War in itself is a flawed system. Uh, and it's kind of just an unnecessary, it's just kind of something that occurs when you have a competitive player to player or player versus player environment in a gotcha game uh, that has pay to play and pay to win and free to play players all lumped into the same grouping. Uh, inevitably, any PvP style, any approach to PvP style uh, content is going to have flaws. So I don't have huge hopes for this. I'm hoping that at the very least that this caters well to the pay to play, pay to win market and that has accessibility for free to win. That's really what I want from a PVP perspective. I know that sounds really bad for free to play players, but PVP competitive is for, it's like a really good way to let whales enjoy the game and give them incentive to continue enjoying the game um and then it's just about making it accessible enough to free to play players that they can also enjoy the benefit of it without like feeling left out i think that's the correct model to go and i just don't feel like they've been properly hitting that they've done a really good job of having the high tier rewards hit value to a degree for pay to play slash pay to win players but they haven't had a big enough umbrella of rewards to make free to play players feel good and i don't know how they need to fix that um uh, because i haven't really put a whole ton of thought into it but i do know that's something that needs to be addressed and hopefully that uh kabam is going in with a similar mindset aq map 7 rebalance is released uh yeah uh some of the changes are good uh map 7 is still a total shit show but some of the changes have been good um energy improvements are great i think Personally, I don't mind that map 7 is a little energy intensive, even with the changes. Um, I think this has reduced the stress enough. I think map 7 should feel grindy. I think it should feel like a commitment because that makes a huge difference. Map 6 versus 7 is a huge difference, and I'm okay with that. Um, I think my only issue is that map 7 is three variants with no predictability on which variant is coming. If the players had any idea ahead of time, variant 1, 2, or 3, which one is coming next, we could prepare for it. But we don't. Um, that's kind of my biggest complaint. 6, 7, node improvements, that's fine. Undo, undo button still coming. Help button has been delayed. My guess is that was a server overload and might even be the reason we have uh, help button issues right now. So I'm not at all surprised about that. They've mentioned it previously when help button gets mentioned that it has kind of like complications on the server side. Uh, so I'm not at all surprised to see that delayed. I do hope for a bigger help option, but it probably will come with lag to the point where like a help for button is probably just as efficient. Honestly, this is not a big concern of mine. I know a lot of people really, really want this, but for me, I wish they would just skip this. I think that it is a quality of life improvement we don't need at the moment when the game has got a lot of bugs that need to be fixed. Uh, AQ Future, Link Nodes Rework, Energy Rework, and Raid Bosses. I think Raid Bosses is awesome. Uh, and the rest, 
you know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so not a lot of commentary there because we haven't gotten a lot of personal information. Now, champions of the contest, this is huge. So the buffs so far have been really, really great. Even if they haven't been like the most amazing buffs, like Punisher 2099 was a little lackluster, it, it's a feel-good buff. Not every buff needs to be game-breaking. It just needs to bring a champion a little bit up to speed. And I feel like they did a really, really good job making the Magnetos feel impactful, especially Red Magneto, which was awesome. Punisher 2099 just feels better to play. He's not like a priority rank up these days, but he at least feels like he's got a solid value these days. Um, I do think that Falcon's niche utility might really show up in a lot of scenarios, and Gambit's just overall playstyle is really, really fun. So I feel like both of these champions have cemented themselves into the decent champion pool. I don't think people are going to be rushing to rank up Falcon anytime soon, but it doesn't feel as bad to pull him. It feels like you could actually use him, even if it's just successful arena fodder, and Gambit it's definitely going to have really, really good uh, value in the future. Dual crystals, featured crystals, uh, those are solid. Featured crystal this time around at least has been hot enough that I feel like I'm pulling into it. Maybe that's just me. Risk crystal, I don't care about. I know it's really, really cool. It's got a lot of good potential, but it's just, you know, whale bait. Signature stone availability. I do feel like they've really hit this mark. Not so much with the sig stones in the events. Uh, we had that one month where we had like a ton on Mutant, Mutant Treasure Island. We had a ton of six stones. That was awesome. But it's really the 22 hour event that makes me feel like the five star six stones are a lot more accessible. Uh, so I do really, really enjoy that. Even if you're not grabbing both of them in the 22 hour event as a calf player, just the early one, the, uh, cr the five star six stone crystal, it's still a really consistent amount of six stones coming up every month. So I super, super, super love that. And then we did have that one month with 80 Five star six stones, that was awesome. Uh, would like to see more of that, but it doesn't look like we got anything crazy. Uh, we do have official announcement of Daredevil overhaul in December, uh, which we kind of already got a hint at, but it's really, really good to see. Uh, and they acknowledge that January will not have champion updates. It's probably because Kabam themselves will have vacation and time off and a lot of stuff going on. But as a result, we're expecting a new cadence to the champion updates, and I think this is really cool. So in February, we're going to expect two value-only updates and two moderate updates. Uh, and that's like Punisher 2099's update are the value updates and then Gambit and Falcon are the moderate updates and then uh, same thing for month two and then in month three they want two overhauls so I don't know what they did but they really upped the cadence here and if they can match this by the end of 2021 we're gonna have just like absolute crazy mind-blowing changes in the champion pool just over like 24 overhauls I'm sorry I'm sorry, bad at math, eight overhauls over the course of the year. It's just an insane number of overhauls, uh, and that's going to be really, really cool, especially if, honestly, even out of the eight, if three out of eight are as impactful as Red Magneto, and the other five are the same impact level as White Magneto, where there's like a niche utility there, it's going to be good. It's going to be real good, uh, and, you know, we can't lie. Falcon and Gambit's updates were definitely solid, and there was a lot of potential for Punisher 2099 to be better than he is even after the update. So I think that even like these other moderate updates and value updates uh, are still going to have a lot of really good potential. So I do really like seeing this. I love seeing this, even if it's something I think isn't as necessary. I think the ramp up and the improvement in the older characters shows a lot of commitment to longevity in the game and I'm super, super stoked. Uh, and then finally, a contest evolves. Self from Stash has been an amazing feature. Love that quality of life change. Absolutely, absolutely amazing. Champion tag filtering is great if you're competitive in war. Dual targets have been great, although I wish the frequency which with it got updated for the newer champions was a little bit faster. Uh, it's still really, really great. <clears throat> Dual target fight again uh, is on pause. Not the biggest of deals, but it is nice. And the root gameplay from the two global root buffs I've seen it's pretty good it's a neat mechanic they've been very generous with the champions they've put on the path so far um <clears throat> so far uh, but I can think of a lot of champions and a lot of different nodes that can make root buff super annoying and we haven't had that yet. Right now, it's been combo party plus root buff. So it feels good, right? You're going in. You're like, okay, you're getting used to it. This is nice. But things like unblockable specials, uh, things like, things like, uh, sorry, uh, uh, 
close encounters, there is a lot of really frustrating potentials for root, root gameplays. <clears throat> Uh, that I think we need to keep our eye out for. Uh, but at the moment, as long as they don't abuse the potential or the anti-player potential of that mechanic, love it. So far, root play, gameplay, absolutely love it. <clears throat> um, we have other gameplay effects coming into play, like the volume trigger or the AoE effects or strikers, um, which I don't really know what that is, to be honest. I think that's the additional champion combo where you come in and you use like a fourth bar of power in order to summon an extra striker or something. That's neat, but until they're in-game, I don't really have much to say. Fight replays is going to be amazing, um, but also I think that's something that just puts a lot of like, um, like neat aspects to the game, but unless there's rewards, I I'm not going to hype it. Like, it was really cool to have the Summoner Champion contest, you know, from like 2017 to 2020. All those were really cool, and I know a lot of people really enjoyed it, but for me, it would have just been nice if there was like a five-star crystal or something to incentivize it, rather than just have it be like a cool aspect of the game. Small things make big waves. Uh, and then incursions, big changes here are still in design. So we saw a lot of changes, all of these really, really good. Um, but I'm really looking forward to these other ones because these are the ones where I'm really like interested in, including new hacks, hack tiers, and a hack rebalance. Emphasis on that rebalance is what I really want uh, because I feel like some of the hacks don't feel impactful. Uh, and then they want to affect the champion refresh timers, no zones and no cooldowns and stuff. I think all of that's going to be really good. I would like to see that sooner rather than later as well. Uh, and then arena improvements, we've seen consistent AI to a degree. It's definitely better, uh, but I feel like it could be a little more aggressive still. Um, improved feature arena rank rewards. They expanded the bracket. I would still really like the top rank bracket to be a percentage instead of a flat number, but you know. Small wins, we did get a 1-5% to near-miss bracket, so that's nice. It is nice. It's just not what I wanted. Um, and then they added the three-star feature champion. I think that was an amazing change. Uh, just to let people get the three-star, I think feels really, really good. And it, it allows newer players who are actually grinding for the three-star feature champion to get them properly. So I do really like that. Um, we know, we all know about the arena strict issues and the auto request help issues. So many crazy things and the pause on social progresses and stuff. So there's a lot of stuff in the works that has a lot of really good potential, a lot of stuff I'm really excited for. Um, but this dev diary, and even like the long time it took me to cover it, is a lot of fluff at the moment. It's just a lot of, hey, just a reminder, this stuff is in the works, this stuff has already been in place. We've had a lot of changes over the last few months, and I think all of it's been absolutely, absolutely amazing when looked at as a whole. Some of it, I think there's some really big spotches that need to be fixed um, or addressed that aren't going to be addressed, but small things. Um, let me know if there's something particular you're interested in that I didn't touch or something you want to, you know, say, hey, I missed. Uh, but as always, I hope you enjoyed. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.